Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial in our video series on RabbitMQ. In the last video, we looked at the concepts behind routing and topics. In this video, we're going to look at how to implement these in Python. As usual, all the code is available on my GitHub and I will leave the link in the description. If you're more interested in a C-sharp version of this video, feel free to skip to the next video where we'll be covering the exact same content but using C-sharp. So we're here again in Visual Studio Code and I'm actually gonna create three Python files this time, a single producer and two consumers. So a new file, we'll add our producer and our two consumers. I'm gonna call one analytics consumer. And the other can be the payments consumer. And these two files will mimic kind of like a microservice. So the analytics consumer.py will be sort of the analytics microservice, and the payments consumer.py will represent the payments microservice. And again, a lot of the code will be very similar to what we did in our original tutorial around the connection and stuff like that. So we'll just copy in that original code to our payments consumer here, and we'll make some changes to represent how this should work with a routing example. So again, we have our callback method, our connection opening and our channel opening code. And we have a declaration of a queue and the basic consume method call here in our original example. So there'll be a couple of things we need to change in our payments consumer to make this work with RabbitMQ routing. The first thing we need to do is we need to have an explicit exchange. So again, we'll use channel.exchange declare after we open the channel and we'll give it the exchange name of routing. This can be any string here, so it doesn't have to be called routing, it can be anything you want. And more importantly, the exchange type is the direct exchange. So exchange type dot direct. So once we have our exchange declared, we also need to declare a queue. And for this queue, we'll leave the queue name as the empty string, which allows the server to assign a random queue name to it and we'll declare it as exclusive, which means that when the connection closes, the queue will also be deleted. And we're just gonna slightly edit the unreceived message up here just to add payments in front of the print statement so we know exactly which service is printing out that it received a message. And then everything here should work as expected. The only thing that's left to do is to bind this queue to the routing exchange. This is because unlike the fanout exchange, the direct exchange will only send messages to queues that have been bound and the routing key is the same as the binding key. So we'll add a binding key between the exchange and the queue here. So we'll say channel equals queue.bind. Then we pass in the exchange name, which is routing. And the queue name which we can store in a variable here. So we'll just save the queue in the queue variable and we'll say queue equals queue.method.queue. And finally, we'll give it the routing key. And our routing key for this service for now will be payments only. So only messages that have the routing key of payments only will be sent to this queue here and consumed by the payments consumer service. Let's copy this code into our analytics consumer. Let's make some changes. It's no longer payment service, it is analytics service. As usual, the connection code is all the same. The exchange we want to use is the same in this example as we saw in the previous video. We just use the same exchange. The queue can be left the same here as it's a random queue. So this service will declare and instantiate a different queue from the payments consumer. The queue binding is something we do need to change. So we'll change the routing key here. So the analytics consumer gets different messages than the payments consumer. So we'll just say analytics only. And our callback should be the same, except we need to give it the queue here. So we need to say queue dot method dot name dot q and we need to do that in the other payments consumer as well
So now let's edit the code in our producer.py. And as usual, we'll just copy in the basic code from our very first example where we create the connection. So this is from the first example. So if you haven't followed that video, please go back and check that out so you know what this code does. But basically we're again, creating a connection, opening a channel, declaring a queue and publishing a message. So in this things, we need to change a couple of things. We no longer need to declare a queue because the queues are tied to our consumers. But what we will need to do is declare the same exchange in the producer as the consumers in case it hasn't already been declared. So we'll simply declare this and then add the exchange type at the top. We'll just change the message we're sending. So this message needs to be rooted. And we will publish directly to the routing exchange with the routing key, whatever we feel is appropriate. So if we want to publish to the analytics consumer, we use the routing key analytics only. And if we want to publish to the payments consumer, we use the key payments only. So for now, we'll publish with the routing key analytics only. So that should do us for our three files we have here. So we should be able to run our two consumers and our producer. And we'd expect because the message is published to the routing exchange using the analytics only key, that it will be received just by the analytics consumer. So let's open a terminal window and start our analytics consumer. So Python analytics.py and open a second terminal window. We can rename our first one to analytics. Our other one, let's start our payments consumer. So Python payments consumer.py rename that to payments and finally a third terminal window for our producer so we'll rename that to producer and when we run our producer.py we should publish a message to the routing exchange with the routing key analytics only and this should be only consumed by the analytics consumer because that is the only one that has the binding key between the exchange and the queue with the key analytics only so let's try run that. So Python producer.py. You can see that we've sent this message that needs to be routed. If we look at our payments consumer, nothing's been received. But if we look at our analytics one, we can see we have actually received that message. So this message needs to be routed. If we edit our producer.py to say payments only, and restart that and run it again, we can see we've sent a message. We can see our analytics service still has only received one message. So that's the previous message, but the payment service now has received a message as well. The second message we sent. Taking a quick look in the RabbitMQ management portal, we can see that the routing exchange has been delivered here. We can see the bindings in the UI. So we can see this randomly generated queue name has been binded with the routing key payments only. And this one here is analytics only. And these queues also exist in our queue section here. And remember, we can actually add multiple bindings to a queue. So we can add a second binding to the analytics consumer with a different routing key. So still bound to the routing exchange, but with the routing key both. And if we add this line to the payments consumer as well, when we send a message with the routing key of both, both the payments consumer and the analytics consumer should pick that message up. So let's restart all of our services. And when we run producer again, we will just change the routing key to both and publish this message. And we should expect both services to receive the message. So Python producer.py, it sent the message. This message needs to be routed. We can see the payment service has received the message and the analytics service has received the message. So now that we've looked at how routing works in RabbitMQ, let's add a third consumer and have a look at how using topics might work using Python and RabbitMQ. So we'll add a new file and call it our userconsumer.py. And let's copy in the code, say from our analytics consumer into our user consumer and make some changes here to support topics. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change the exchange type we use. So we're no longer using a direct exchange. We want to use a topic exchange and we'll change the name of our exchange while we're at it because we won't be able to change the exchange type of an existing exchange. We need to create a new exchange. So we'll call this one my topic exchange. 
and when we're adding our bindings, we want to add them to the correct exchange. So we'll delete this order binding. The exchange we want to add any bindings to will be the my topic exchange. So that's really all the code changes we need to make in the user consumer. We just have to mirror these now in our other files. So in the analytic consumer, we will delete one of these, change the exchange to my topic exchange, which is what we'll declare, and then change the exchange type to topic. And the same in the payments consumer. Change the exchange names and change the exchange type. The most interesting change then is what we do with the routing keys. So we can see when we bind a exchange to a queue, we have to pass this routing key parameter. So in the payments consumer, we now can use the hash and star wildcards like we saw in the other videos. So we might add a routing key, say hash dot payments here. And like we saw, this means the hash matches one or more words in our routing key. So anything that ends with the word payments will be read to the payments consumer. So whether it's users.europe.payments or orders.payments or anything like that, the payments consumer should start receiving them now. We might want to do something different in the user consumer. So again, using the hash key, but this time at the end, we might have user.hash. So like we saw, this means that any routing key that begins with user dot will be routed to this user consumer. So whether it's user.payments.europe or user.orders or anything with as much after user as possible will be routed here, but only things that begin with user. And finally, in our analytics consumer, we can change the routing key also. So we might have something like star.europe.star. So this means any message that begins with one word is followed by Europe and then ends with one word will be routed to the analytics consumer. So this might represent a sort of analytic service that is only interested in data from Europe. So something like users.europe.payments will be routed here, but anything with more than one word at the start or the end won't be. So if we had users.orders.europe.payments or something, it wouldn't be routed here because there is more than one word before the .europe. And the same at the end, if there is more than one word after the Europe, it won't be routed because we've used the star wildcard rather than the hash wildcard. So let's finally make the changes in our producer.py here and see how we can run the code and what happens. So again, we just need to change the exchange name and the exchange type. So let's copy in my topic exchange here and also the exchange type to topic. And let's actually publish two messages here. So we might have a user payments message and it might be something like a European user paid for something. And then we want to publish that. So we want to publish it to the My Topic Exchange. But the routing key will be different in this case. So first, let's change the body to the user payments message. And the routing key might be user.europe.payments. So what services would we expect to receive this message? The user consumer here will get any message that begins with user. Dot. So we would expect the user service or user consumer to receive this message. The analytics service should get anything that has Europe in the middle and one word before and after. So we would expect the analytics consumer to also get this message. And the payments consumer will receive anything that ends in payments. So we would also expect the payments consumer to get this message with the routing key shown here. So all of our consumers should get this message if this is the routing key that we use to send the message. So let's copy this and when we run our producer.py, we will also send a second message. In this case, we might call the message business order message, so a slightly different context. And we might say a European business, in this case, ordered goods. Again, we want to publish to the same exchange, my topic exchange, except we want to now publish the business order message. We also want to print out the business order message here. Let's just space this out so it's slightly easier to see. And our routing key will also change. So it's no longer user Europe payments is relevant. It might be something like business Europe order. Europe order. 
So if we set in a message with this routing key, what services would we expect to consume it? The user consumer won't receive it because it only will receive messages beginning with user. The analytics consumer will receive it as it is for any message that has Europe in the middle. And the payments consumer won't receive it because the routing key does not end in payments. So let's run these consumers in the producer and see if what happens is what we expect. First, let's add a for terminal window for our user consumer. And let's start our user consumer. So Python user consumer.py. Start our payments. So Python payments consumer.py and analytics Python analytics consumer.py. So our analytics consumer, our payments consumer, and our user consumer are all running. And finally, let's start our producer. So Python producer.py. We send in our two messages a European user paid for something and the European business ordered goods. We can see our analytic service, as we expected, received both messages. However, both the payment service and the user service just received the message that's relevant for the user. So in this video, we've seen how we can use the concepts of routing and topics, as well as the topic and direct exchanges in RabbitMQ to smartly send messages to different consumers in our system, depending on the message context. In the next video, we'll look at the same example in C Sharp before moving on to more different patterns we can implement using RabbitMQ. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel for more RabbitMQ content.